Welcome to Beyond the Hall, a short online meeting for and from those connected to Maidenhead Citadel Salvation Army Church. During this short meeting we hope to give you space to worship, to pray, to think and apply God's word to your life for today.
Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all the ladies out there. We find ourselves in a difficult situation in a different world in these days and where we would have gathered this morning at Maidenhead Citadel to worship together, to celebrate the ladies in our lives and to give thanks for the influence they've had on us. We find ourselves connecting from a distance in a world that's in deep confusion and overwhelmed by the situation that we find ourselves. We can be assured that God is near that God is moving that, and that God will draw close to us if we allow him to. On a Sunday morning at Maidenhead Citadel, we've been thinking through the things that Jesus said on the cross and the fact that they weren't just random statements, but actually Jesus was fulfilling prophecy, but Jesus was also speaking to us for this generation. And so I thought we would continue on with the theme of the words of Jesus on the cross. So in the Bible, in John chapter 19, we read this. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished and to fulfill scripture he said I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch and held it up to his mouth. When Jesus had tasted it he said it is finished. Then he bowed his head and released his spirit. Interesting scripture. Last week we looked at the words of it is finished as Jesus then passed away. 
Today we th listen to his words, I am thirsty, or as the King James Version puts it, I thirst, fulfilling prophecy. On any given Sunday we would normally try and root that scripture and look up some of the Old Testament teaching and, and how it connects and what we learn from that. But actually this morning I thought I would give you some application that can help us in these days when actually we find ourselves locked away and not getting on with life. You see, Jesus found himself in a crisis, a big crisis, a crisis that would lead to death ultimately. And as he speaks the word from the cross, we know what the end is. We know the end of the story that he rises again. And yet actually we find these words, I thirst. Commentators would just pick up on the fact that actually it was a fulfilment of the prophetic writings. We could turn to the Psalms and some of the words there. We can turn to some of the other scriptures and discover that God had prophesied it into being through the men of his time. But Jesus finds himself in a difficult situation and he declares, I thirst. We wouldn't say, I thirst, we would say, I am thirsty. And actually in this Mother's Day, we would find ourselves in, certainly as a child, I am thirsty. Our mother would provide for us. In these tough times that we find ourselves in, we might be asking ourselves the same question. Am I thirsty? And if I'm thirsty, what am I thirsty for? Because actually, some of us want human contact. Some of us want us to get back to life as we knew it. Some of us want to connect with those people that we've not seen in recent days. In tough times, we normally retreat to that which is comfortable. Mother's Day is a day when we celebrate the ladies in our life who've touched us, who've encouraged us, who've challenged us, who've built us into the people that we have become. Mother's Day is one of those days that actually we give thanks to God for those influences on our life. Now, let's be honest, not all of us can give thanks because it's not always been a great experience. But I, the truth is that in the crisis, in the difficulty, we retreat to the place that actually we find security. It's not always a good place, but it's a place that we find security. And so today we find ourselves in a tough place. A place where actually we've been told to socially distance ourselves. A place that actually we're longing for human connection. A place where we have retreated to security of to keep healthy, but have we retreated to security of unhealthiness as our minds take control. What was Jesus thirsting for? Theologically we could dig deeper and come up with lots of ideas but I've got four different R's that actually probably are more application rather than theologically rooted but maybe help us in this season that we find ourselves. Firstly I believe that Jesus was thirsty for rest. In these days when we feel overwhelmed and stressed and not knowing where to turn and panicking as we look at the headlines and turn on the news, we just probably want to rest, to relax, to stop, to quit overthinking and getting on with life. Jesus had found himself completely whipped and beaten and completely downtrodden. He had been sparred at it. He had been rejected by the people that had said they worshipped him. He was overwhelmed. He finds himself nailed to a cross separated from everything that he'd known. And he declares, I am thirsty. Could it be that he's thirsty for rest? His body had given up. His mind had had enough. He knew the will of the Father. He knew the end of the story. Yet actually the turmoil had taken its toll. In Matthew chapter 11, 28, Jesus says, come to me all you who are tired and heavy laden, who are overburdened, who are overstressed, and I will give you rest. Perhaps in this day of struggle for us, are you thirsty for rest from all that's going on? Secondly, it could be said that Jesus was thirsty for relationship. There's a whole theological debate of where was God when Jesus was on the cross and we could debate it and we could look at different commentators and we could 
argue perhaps a different theological stance between us and yet actually I believe that Jesus recognised that actually in the pain and in the heart of the crucifixion that it felt a tad unfair. Of course we know that and we believe that Jesus was both deity, he was God, but he was also human. The emotions were all tangled up together and actually in that sense of abandonment Jesus was thirsty for relationship. The connections that we read in, in John chapter 10 when actually we see Jesus saying the Father and I are one. That picture that we understand of this connection that's deep seemed to be distanced. I guess for us we find ourselves distanced in the physical sense because we can't connect. We can't greet each other with a hug or a handshake. We can't just grab a coffee together. We feel distant. We feel the disconnect. And yet because we are one in Christ, wherever we find ourselves, the relationship with one another can be secure because in him we are secure. In these days, God is not distant. But he asked us, are we thirsty for more of him? Are we thirsty for relationship with him? Are we thirsty for a deeper connection with him? The third hour I came up with that Jesus could be thirsty for was renewal. In Romans chapter 12, we're encouraged to seek God and seek the renewal of the mind. Jesus, who had been beaten, had wept, had been spat upon, who had had that experience in the garden when he said, God, oh, that it would be your will that you would take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but your will be done. He's tired. Now, I don't know about you, but when I get tired, my mind starts to overthink. I start to feel overwhelmed by small things as well as big things. Life seems tough. Life seems worse than what perhaps it really is. Jesus finds himself on the cross, nailed to the cross, his body completely overwhelmed, his mind stressed and unable to process what's going on. And he is thirsty for renewal. In these days, of being locked away, of not being able to connect, of being overwhelmed, for some being stressed, for some worrying that actually they will get poorly and what it means, or that we would renew our mind and recognise that God is close and that actually we'll ask that God would build a hedge of protection around our mind that the enemy wouldn't choose to trip us up and cause us to lose focus. Friends, God loves us. God cares for us. God wants us to know that he is there. Oh, that God would renew our mind this day and help us to see him in our present circumstances. And ultimately, our fourth hour is Jesus was thirsty for the resurrection. You see, the power of death would be defeated the power of sin would no longer be able to hold humanity because the blood of Jesus would be enough to beat the power of the enemy that we would know life eternal. In these days when we are locked away, when we feel overwhelmed, when we don't understand, oh that we would recognise that actually perhaps in the physical it feels that everything's closed, but in the spiritual we will have a personal resurrection for each of us. Perhaps we will be saying, I'm thirsty for more of God. I'm thirsty to know him deeply. I'm thirsty to know the power of the resurrection. The thing that raised Christ from the dead lives in us, Paul declares. Oh, that we would be thirsty for a personal resurrection, a personal realisation that God loves us and gave his son for us. The problem is, we know the story. If I sat here with a glass of water and said, do you want a drink? You would say, well, John, I can't have a drink. We're in different parts of the world. Even in thirst, we can choose not to drink. As we focus on the things that Jesus said and the significance, or oh, that we would be thirsty to know him more, to understand him more. To trust him more. 
Are you willing to drink of the Spirit? Are you willing to declare that you're thirsty for more of God and allow him to fulfil that thirst? Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you that you love us deeply and that in the present circumstances that we find ourselves, that even though we can't be together physically, that you are close beside us and we can connect in this way. Father, I pray for everybody that's connecting through this video clip and I ask, Father God, that this Sunday they will understand your love for them, that they will know that you are close, but more than that, Father God, they will know that you want to just feed that thirst with your love. Lord, we're mindful that our world is in a mess and we pray, Father God, that you will work that you will, your power will be released and that as the people of God, we will be mobilised to be all that we can be for your sake. But also, Father God, that we will throw ourselves at your mercy and trust in you in these days. Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you for sending Jesus. Draw us close to you in these days and help us find rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning and God bless.